All right, Endless Engines week three. What are we doing today? This week I figured out how the textures for the vehicle are gonna work and messed around with some lighting for the scene. Going from this to this. Before we get into it, I must extend a huge thank you. Last week the channel surpassed 2,000 subscribers. I kinda can't believe it. I feel like we had just hit 1,000, and but here we are. Everyone who's subscribed, I'm super happy to have you here, and thank you to anyone who's just been around to watch. All the support means a ton, and I'm looking forward to the future of the channel. So anyways, let's get into the video. So prepare yourself for some workarounds. Last week I kitbashed together a car model, but this week I found out the UVs were absolutely unusable. Terrible. Texturing with these was basically impossible. Uh-oh. We've run into a problem. I might have to fix this. <laughs> so my first thought was like, I'll re-topologize in Blender, auto UV the whole thing, and then texture that. I'll re-rig the thing from scratch if I have to. Uh, yeah, that didn't work. So I kept messing around in Blender, and after quite a while of this, I was starting to get a little bit nervous. I even hopped back into Unreal Engine trying to use their built-in UV tools, once again to no avail. I thought I'd gotten a little bit of success here, but this turned out to be as untexturable as anything else. So I definitely had a problem. I sincerely didn't know how to texture the vehicle, which is kind of important. So plan B. I still have the original project where I pieced together all the separate Greeblies into a car. I could apply textures there, and then just attach the pieces to the thing I'd already animated. Is that a crazy idea? I don't know. We're gonna try it though. So let me get my reference back up, so we can figure out how we want to texture this thing. Anyways, I went for a blue color like the concept art we generated, which will sort of establish the color scheme for the finished render. Blue, gray, and a bit of yellow, which is not yet represented. So yeah, there's a couple trade-offs with doing it this way. Uh, I'd lost all fine control and detailing I could do in Substance Painter, and to apply separate materials to different parts of the model, I actually had to use the modeling tools to cut the meshes apart and reassemble them, then applying separate textures. This plan is ridiculous, but I really didn't want to start over from scratch. Once again, we'll say I have come up with better ways to do things. After all this is said and done, here's our first pass on texturing the car. Then I went to combine the whole mesh to attach to the animation we've done. And now disaster strikes again. Come on, don't break. Just all play nicely. Okay, I was prepared for this. So that doesn't work, but we do have this. So yeah, all of these parts we're going to have to stay separate. Since I'm going to be using these spinning wheels from the control rig, we needed these wheels to be gone. At first I was just going to cut them out like last time, but that, you guessed it, broke the textures again. Instead I just applied an empty material to the wheels. If you can't beat them, make them invisible. Now I took all of the parts and attached them to the SUV as a base. Taking this whole pile of models, I copied them into their own level to isolate them, and migrated this whole level over into the Endless Engines project. Now accessing the control rig skeleton, I added a socket to the body to attach the new textured shell to. Really forcing this to work here, I lined up the shell with the body, set all the meshes from static to movable, dragged it over the control rig in the scene outliner, and hit attach. And to my surprise, this actually worked without crashing. Son of a bitch, I think this is gonna work. Yes! <sighs> yeah. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, once again, I thought we were kind of screwed there for a second. My original plan was to take the control rig and apply the empty material to the body as so, so only our textured parts remained. But because I failed to line it up perfectly, when applying a metal material to the control rig instead, we get these perfect accents which really tied the whole thing together. That might be even better, because that's just a bunch of extra sweet detail. Just like, don't look at the car from this side. So that's texturing. Now put some materials on the wheels, and we've got ourselves a pretty cool looking vehicle. So with that, let's move on to the beginnings of our environment design. First things first, our render needs some roads. I have a whole video on how to set up spline paths for making roads easily, but since this is a straight shot, I kept things more simple. At first I made a road out of a bunch of individual pieces with Megascans textures, but I later switched over to one stretched out cube. I messed around with a couple different Megascans textures, but I ultimately landed on this one, with the solid stripe down the middle. Now I also wanted to get our lighting to that coveted 80% mark before we carry on. So I added in some volumetric clouds, an exponential height fog, and my own directional light, canning the built-in sky sphere in favor of this more gray, dreary mood. This is where you can get pretty artsy with adjusting your look. I found the secret sauce for this render by enabling volumetric fog and adjusting the emissive color to a dark blue-green, which gives the scene a common sort of color grade. Lighten it up a little bit. Ooh, hold on. That ties the whole thing together in a big way. Having the volumetric fog enabled also allowed me to attach some rec lights to the front of the car with an emissive material, giving us some sweet headlights. So here's where all that leaves us. Once we have some more assets in, you'll be able to really see the dramatic difference this fog makes. And speaking of new assets, we're going to go back to an old project, this one, where I used Google Maps to generate these giant low-poly cities. These will act as lovely backdrop pieces. Porting these over into the project, I set them extremely far back. Like, ridiculously far. So that just the tops of the buildings are appearing above the distant fog. This is going to give a lovely sense of parallax once we fill in the space in between. I got distracted from the background for a moment to add some point lights under the headlights just to make them brighter. I combined all of the city's textures in Blender and then used just one material to texture all of them. Since they're so far away, I just used these dark squares. And now here's that fog on and off comparison I mentioned. As you can see, it's a pretty extreme difference. Don't underestimate the power of some thick fog. And so we finally made it. That is the progress this week. Here is the render so far. All right. After jumping through quite a few hoops, I think we've landed with a pretty solid look here. Now what's left to do is some character animation and of course fill in the environment with detail. It's a lot of space to fill and there's a lot of work to be done, but I'm excited by the progress thus far. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like and be sure to subscribe to see this render through to its completion. I'll see you all in the next one.